We are going to take a pause in the, in the schedule for a moment to uh, welcome um, uh, Representative uh, Josh Gottheimer, uh, Democrat of New Jersey, who has joined us um, and has a, a limited window between votes, is a, a friend from the New York area, and we're happy that, uh, that he is here. I'll take a point of personal privilege in that he was a Senate page, so he crossed uh, to his old home on the, uh, uh, on the side. I know that because my son was also a Senate page, and we, we bonded over that fact. So uh, thank you for being here, and uh, we welcome you uh, to the, uh, the podium. Perfect Jewish height here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Richard and uh, Herb. Thank you so much, and uh, all the AZM officers and members. I really, I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm uh, also my friend Annie Borens is here. Who I saw a minute ago, who uh, was, was an early mentor of mine and the uh, uh, executive director of the AAPI uh, Foundation, of which I was on before getting elected to Congress. Uh, and it is really a treat to have a few minutes with you, uh, leaders uh, in the Jewish community and as a, a Jewish member of Congress. Uh, I, you know, it, it always is good to be around friendly faces and those who are also strong supporters of Israel. So thank you for the time. Um, you know, I, I was on the phone yesterday. We had a conference call with superintendents, and you're just building on the topic you just brought, you were talking about, with superintendents from across my district, because we've had a series, another series of swastikas uh, in our schools. In fact, one of the schools, multiple incidents, three or four in the last couple of weeks, um, in just one school. And this is after this summer, uh, you know, during, on, on my campaign, there were swastikas drawn on one of my supporters' homes, on their garage, spray painted on their garage. Um, n not Jewish people, just people who were s standing by someone who was Jewish. Um, so I think it's a moment. Uh, it's a very, it's a very heavy moment in for for um, the Jewish community and those of us who really believe we have to stand strong now more than ever. Which is why I'm lucky to have allies like Senator Chuck Schumer, who I know was here just before me, and uh, my uh, friend and mentor Elliot Engel, who I hope uh, spend a few minutes with you and uh, who's, who's terrific. Um, uh, and yes, I'll applaud for him. And uh, Ed Royce has been a good friend, and Ted, I know, is with you, and Ted Deutsch, and Lee Zeldin, I think, was with you, and he's, he's also been a terrific ally, and so many others uh, that have been such good friends. Uh, and Jason Greenblatt is not only uh, the present special representative for international negotiations, but he is my constituent <laughs> in Teaneck, New Jersey. Um, so, you know, that's most important. Uh, you know, this year was a very momentous one for Israel and for the United States. For more than 70 years, the United States and the state of Israel have fostered and strengthened a remarkable relationship. This alliance, rooted deeply in our shared values of freedom, democracy, and the rule of law, has clearly developed into one of the most extraordinary partnerships in the modern world. I've always believed, like I know you do, uh, that the bond between the United States and Israel is and must always be unbreakable. Unfortunately, we've seen that Israel is increasingly vilified in the world stage and used for political and partisan gamesmanship here at home. Like you, I refuse to accept that. I think it's more important than ever that members of both parties, Democrats and Republicans, remember that, our, that Israel's strength and strategic importance to our country is first, right? When I, when, I make an, when I meet anyone, I say, first and foremost, of course, we've got to stand by Israel, but Israel's success is essential to our success, right? It is our vital ally. <laughs> and to our security in the region, right? And, and it, it cannot and must not be a partisan issue. And I think you being here, coming to Washington, right, really puts a, a point on this, that, you, that when, when you talk to any members of Congress, I think what's so important to explain to them is this is not partisan. And I know some want to make it partisan, right? They want to turn it into a partisan football. Like in this town, everything else, they try to turn into a partisan football, uh, right? I, I co-chair a group called the, the Problem Solvers Caucus. It's a bipartisan group, half Democrats, half Republicans, right? You, you can't believe the grief I get because I try to talk to people on both sides of the aisle. 
and the problem is that issues like these, they, they do their best to try to turn them into them. That's why I've refused, since I'm in Congress, to ever sign a partisan one-sided bill or letter, letter when it comes to Israel. Refuse. <laughs> my own colleagues in my own party go to the press and say negative things about it when I do. You know, I've worked across the aisle to support bilateral missile defense cooperation, crack down on terrorist organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah, which I know you've addressed over the years successfully, combat the hateful boycott, divestment and sanctions movement that I know is another topic that is, that we talk about and should, PDS, with, tied closely with anti-Semitic activity at home and around the world, and what we seem to do everything to preserve our ally Israel's qualitative military edge in the region. And you know we're considering legislation to press the U.S. Israel to pass the U.S. Israel Security Authorization Assistance Authorization Act. I never call these things by their long names. I know them only in their shorthand, like MOU. But but yes, they have full names. Um, AZM's efforts to inculcate strong support for Israel across all backgrounds, from Reform Zionist to ZOA and everything in between, demonstrates to me, and I hope to everyone, your ongoing commitment to strengthen this historic bipartisan relationship between our two countries. And this, the achievements of this relationship speak for themselves. The counterterrorism cooperation between the U.S. and Israel has saved countless lives here in America and around the world. Israeli technologies protect American troops stationed in the Middle East. And our relationship has given rise to a thriving, independent state of Israel with America's embassy in its eternal capital, Jerusalem, which I supported strongly. But now more than ever, with insurgents in both parties, spreading ideological-driven misinformation. We need to make the case even stronger. We need you to make the case even stronger. A strategic case, to be sure, the case for America's national security and our own interests, but a moral case, too, based on the values that we hold dear and that form the basis of the American Zionist movement. And that's why I'll, I'll, I'll conclude by recalling on Sabbath Eve, May 14th, 1948, when David Ben-Gurion and members of the provisional government stood beneath the portrait of Mr. Herzl to read aloud and sign the Declaration of Independence of the Modern State of Israel. Just before they signed their names, they made an appeal, quoting them, to the Jewish people throughout the diaspora to rally around the Jews of the land of Israel and the tasks of immigration and upbuilding and to stand by them in the great struggle for the realization of the age-old dream, the redemption of Israel. Today, we have an obligation to help realize the same dream. It is the dream of Jewish families the world over who scrape together spare coins to fill Jewish national funds at Aqqa boxes, the dream of survivors of the Shoah in Europe and their descendants for an eternal homeland for people who had lived through centuries of persecution, the dream of families gathered at Seder tables in New Jersey and in the many places we live in this room and across this great country, sang in, use, in unison next year in Jerusalem. So with that, I just want to thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your work, for all you do. I know it's not always easy. I feel it too. So you've got a friend here. Let us never shy away from the vital task of standing up for our ally Israel and strengthening the enduring U.S.-Israel relationship. Thank you, and God bless you. Oops, sorry.